It is no secret to longtime fans of the channel that trading card games have been a big influence in my life, both on and off the channel. In this series, both Demon Battler and myself will be opening 24 packs, or one box, of each core Yu-Gi-Oh! booster set in chronological order. After each opening, we will build decks from all of the cards we have opened thus far, then duel each other in a best of three match, with three prizes up for grabs to improve our decks. The winner will receive two of those prizes, and the loser will get one. The possibilities for prizes are almost limitless, including single cards, sealed product, structure decks, and much more. Every card in the entire game's history will be obtainable in some form. However, neither of us will be able to rest on past laurels easily. The ever-changing official forbidden and limited list, our own choices of cards to be banished to the Shadow Realm, and even changes to the very rules of the game will keep our decks and duels fresh. This is yet another Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression Series. Raging Battle was released May 12th, 2009. This set introduced the Kwaki Meru archetype, an archetype revolving around the spell card Iron Core of Kwaki Meru. This set also introduced the Earthbound Immortals, giant direct attackers that are destroyed when there is no field spell on the field. This set also has support for the Blackwing, Morphtronic, and Ojama archetypes. This set is probably the most impactful set we have had of all in terms of how it will make progression series play out. This set has so many impactful low rarity cards that it's going to turn our metagame upside down. So we're going to be here a while as I take you through this set. Uh, the first card I'd like to talk about is a Phoenixian Seed, which lets you special summon Phoenixian Cluster Amaryllis from your hand, which is an OTK enabler. And we'll talk about that once we get up to the higher rarity cards. Now we have the Black Wings. Uh, we have at common, and it's very important that we get three of each of these. Blackwing Shura the Blue Flame, which is an 1800 normal summon, that when it destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you get the special summon of Blackwing with 1500 or less attack. Usually this will wind up being a tuner, such as Gale. And then, the big common that people hated this deck for, Blackwing Kalute the Moon Shadow. If you remember Honest, this is Honest for Black Wings. This is a hand trap that activates during the damage step that gives a battling Black Wing monster 1400 attack. This is super powerful and incredibly frustrating to play against. And if anything gets banned out of Black Wing, it will probably be this. Then we have a couple of Morphtronics as well. Uh, we have Vidion and Scopin. Morphtronic Vidion uh, gains attack for each equip on it, so if you put a double tool C and D on this, which is a card we'll be discussing later, that makes it 2800. I think this is a fine one of in Morphtronics. And then Morphtronic Scopin lets you uh, make synchro plays because it is a tuner and you can special summon a Morphtronic from your hand to go into something such as a Power Tool Dragon if you're lucky to pull one. Then we have Master Gig, which is a Progression Playoffs All-Star. Uh, this is a pretty strong finisher for the Psychic deck. It's a 2600 2 tribute that once per turn you can give up a thousand life points to destroy a number of monsters your opponent controls equal to the number of Psychic type monsters you control. Uh, there are ways to cheat this out within the Psychic archetype, and this is one of the cards that I have been waiting for to be able to play a Psychic deck, but we'll need to see what else we get. And then we get to a big common spell card, Black Whirlwind. This is one of the cards that really vaulted Blackwing up to tier 1 status. Uh, whenever you normal summon a Blackwing monster, you can add another one from your deck that has less attack. This is not a hard once per turn, so every time you normal summon, you can get value. If you have something that gives you additional normal summons, you can get additional value. So there have been lists of Black Wings that have been playing Double Summon to get extra value off of Black Whirlwind and go for big synchro plays. A double Tool C and D is the Morphtronic Equip card. Uh, you can equip this to a level 4 higher Morphtronic or a Power Tool Dragon. Now this will stop battle phase effects, give it a thousand attack, and on the defense it's an attack lockout. This is a pretty solid card if you open Power Tool Dragon. And we also have Trap Stun. 
So Trap Stun is our first real piece of low rarity trap interaction that we have. Uh, this is essentially a free negate for a trap card, so we won't be playing Seven Tools of the Bandit too much anymore. Just because Trap Stun is better, we want to play Seven Tools over Trap Stun. It is because this is not a counter trap, so it will not negate a counter traps. But if we're afraid of counter traps, we'll still play Seven Tools. However, this will uh, replace it in most instances. And Morphtronic Bind. This card vaulted Morphtronic to playability. If you have a Morphtronic monster face up, it is a one-sided Gravity Bind. Now remember, Gravity Bind is banned in our format, so if we play Morphtronic, we'll have access to that card again. However, I'm a little bit skittish about playing Morphtronic just because Demon picked up a copy of Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon, uh, and Cyber Dragon is going to go to a more than one copy fairly soon. At the rare slot, we have a lot of power as well. Uh, we have Blackwing Blizzard the Far North. This is their level 2 tuner, and this is very important because we do not have any copies of Gale. So if we play Blackwing, we're going to need to pick up multiples of this to be able to make the synchros that make this deck go. So what this does is when it's normal summon, you can special summon a level 4 or lower Blackwing in your graveyard, and you can use that to go into a synchro play. Uh, there is also Morphtronic Remoten, uh, which can make some adds off of your graveyard or your deck, depending on what position it's in. I think this is a fine one of uh, in the Morphtronic deck, but it's not amazing. What is an amazing card is Deep Sea Diva. There are all sorts of things that you can do with this. Uh, when it's normal summon, you get to special summon a level 3 or lower Sea Serpent monster from your deck. This is a one card Synchro 5, and we'll see all kinds of play. The biggest rare, even bigger than Blizzard, is 1 for 1. A 1 for 1 is incredibly powerful, both now and in the future. Uh, you can uh, send a monster from your hand to the graveyard to special summon a level 1 monster from your hand or your deck. The farther we get into this format, the more powerful level 1s we will get. This, uh, if we can pick up a Catapult Turtle out of one of the reprint sets, will make a Magical Scientist OTK incredibly consistent to the point where we may have to emergency ban the card. And then here's the Iron Core of Kwaki Meru that the Kwaki Meru is built around. And almost every card that's in the archetype requires you to reveal this card or discard this card from your hand. So it's important to have this if you want to play the archetype. But the archetype is generally not worth it, it just has a few strong cards that are played outside the archetype. Snowman Eater! This kind of effect we haven't seen for a long time. Uh, this is Man Eater Bug with a 1900 butt. This is pretty playable just by the fact that it's hard to kill in battle and you get value when it's flipped up. Now at the super rare slot, we have a few interesting cards. We have a Phoenixian Cluster Amaryllis. Uh, this card is banned because it has uh, OTK potential. The reason why this card has so much OTK potential it is because of its final effect that reads during your end phase, you can uh, banish one plant type monster from your graveyard to special summon it from your graveyard in defense position. And then every time it gets destroyed, it does 800 damage to your opponent. That final effect that makes it special summon itself from your graveyard, that is not a once per turn. So as long as you're able to dump 10 plants in your graveyard and you have a way to repeatedly destroy this, which isn't too hard, you can kill your opponent in one shot. And that is the reason why this card is banned. Then we have a couple of synchros that are pretty good. We have Blackwing Armed Wing, which is probably the most accessible Blackwing synchro. It requires a Blackwing tuner specifically, so you'll most likely make this off of Blizzard and a 4. You can also make this off of a Gale, but there aren't many good 3s in Blackwing. It is a 20... 800 piercer when it attacks a defense position monster, or it's 2300. It's pretty efficient at what it does, and you do want to have one synchro at least. This would be nice because I don't have a good synchro 6. Yes, I know I passed up on the Goyo Guardian and I'm gonna get roasted in my server for it, but I still think it was worth taking what I did. And then the other synchro is Sea Dragon Lord Gishilnadon. Now, this specifically requires a level 3 non tuner. So it's meant to go into this with Deep Sea Diva, but this is not a terrible card. It's 2300 on a level 5. I have Magical Android already, so it's not that important for me. But this could be important for Demon because it's still generic. You just have to use a 2 and a 3 specifically. But it is a level 5 Synchro, which we don't have at low rarity yet. And then next we have a Delta Crow Anti-Reverse, which is a pretty good heavy storm impression. If you control a Blackwing, you get to destroy all of your opponent's face down back row. And if you control exactly three Blackwing monsters, you can activate it from hand. 
And at the ultra rare slot, we have mostly some bombs. We have one floodgate and a very powerful utility card. So I'll go ahead and go over these. A strong wind dragon is the biggest one tribute monster that we have access to. Uh, if you tribute a dragon type monster, this can get gigantic. If you tribute a dragon type 1800, this becomes a 3300 piercer for a one tribute. It is extremely efficient. Then we have a Blackwing Elf and the Raven, which is not a fantastic card, but I wouldn't mind picking this up if I do go the Blackwing route. Uh, this lets you change a monster's battle position, and it's it's like Cyber Dragon. So it's a situationally better Sirocco. It also lets you search things like Sirocco and Shura off of Black Whirlwind more easily. And then we get to the Earthbound Immortals. We have our first two in this set, and they're going to appear for the next several sets. These are going to be incredibly important for Turbo Duels specifically, because the disadvantage to the Earthbound Immortals is there has to be a field spell on the field for these to exist. But because Speed World 2 is a field spell that cannot leave the field, there will always be one, and these cards are incredibly powerful in that environment. So all the Earthbound Immortals have mostly the same effects. Uh, there can only be one on the field, so if both of us have one, the first one, the summon one, is the only one that can have one. They can't be targeted for attacks, they are all direct attackers, and then they all have this effect that will destroy them if there is no field spell. We're not going to be playing these outside Turbo Duels, but in Turbo Duels they will be extremely potent. Uh, Asylum Piscu is probably the weakest one in that it's not a three-turn clock on its own. And then, generally speaking, all of them have effects where when they leave the field except by their own effect, you get an effect that's unique to them. Asylum Piscu wipes out all of your opponent's face-up monsters and does a small amount of damage to them. The best one for our format for now is going to be Coca Pakapu. So this destroy, if it destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you get to do damage to your opponent equal to the destroyed monster's original attack. It's not going to be doing that very often because it will just be attacking directly, unless there's a monster that has an effect that you really need to get rid of. But this is a 3k direct attacker, and it's very, very strong. It's also easy to get all of these out because they're all dark, and you can use the speed spell of Fires of Doomsday to get fodder for these. I only have one copy of Fires of Doomsday, but if I pull one, it's going to be worth playing it in Turbo Duel specifically, just because these can be very hard to answer and they win the game if unchecked. Kwakimeru Drago, while not good now, is going to be very powerful once we get to Dragon Ruler format, because uh, the Dragon Rulers are all rares, and it's not guaranteed that we'll get enough of them to play a pure Dragon Ruler deck, and most of the other good decks from that time frame heavily use light and dark monsters, and Kwaki Meru Drago prevents the special summoning of light or dark monsters. So it can very easily, depending on what our extra decks look by then, it can easily lock your opponent out of the extra deck. And then we have some more synchros. Uh, most of these are not generic, unfortunately, but they do have their uses. Exploder Dragon Wing is a Synchro 7 that requires Dragon-type non-tuners. It's okay for a 7, considering that I don't have Dark Strike Fighter. Although most of the time, if I'm going to be making a 7, it would just be Black Rose Dragon anyway. But I would be okay with getting this to put in any sort of Dragon Core. And there is Power Tool Dragon, which is also the Ghost Rare. This is the big payoff for Morphtronic. If we get a Power Tool Dragon, then I am very inclined to try to ban a Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon just to be able to unlock my machine decks. And then the final Synchro is Trident Dragon, which requires a Dragon Tuner and a Dragon-type non tutors, so you have to be playing all dragons to be able to make this. So what this does is it effectively wins the game when you make it. It's a 3k Synchro 10 that when it's Synchro Summoned, uh, you can uh, pop two of your own cards, and then for each card destroyed this way, it gets an extra attack uh, during each battle phase during the turn you summon it. So if you have two cards to pop, this is 9,000 damage. So it could see play in the dragon decks for now, but it is a pretty big investment and you have to be playing pure dragon. And the other really good ultra rare that I'd like to discuss is Forbidden Chalice. This is a card that completely warped the metagame when it came out because this is effect negation on a quick play spell card. The important part about this is it's effect negation that changes the attack of the monster, so this can be activated during the damage step. 
these sorts of cards still see play today for that reason, just because they can negate effects rather during the damage step. The attack boost can also be used as a combat trick, but most of the time you're just using this as an effect negation. While the secret rares aren't great, there are two of them that I would like to discuss. They are Light End Dragon and Chaos End Master. Light End Dragon requires light non-tuners, and it's a pretty big body. It's 2600 for a Synchro 8, which isn't horrible. But you can uh, at attack declaration during battle. This can beat over really powerful monsters. You can drop its stats by 500 permanently to drop the battle the battling monsters 1500 stats until the end phase of the turn so this can wind up hitting over monsters as large as 3500 attack and then the other secret error that i'd like to discuss is chaos end master so this card is extremely expensive because it has not been reprinted and it has some unique roles in Edison, particularly in archetypes such as light sworn the reason why this card is so unique is because it is a light warrior tuner with 1500 attack so it is extremely searchable and if we play if we pull this we will be able to incorporate this into a number of decks now raging battle was not the only big set there was only one other set that came out but it's a big one it is the 2009 gold series released on april 21st 2009 this is going to be on the line for this duel and it has some absolute banger reprints all the Monarchs, the original four Monarchs are in here at Common, and the other two Monarchs are in the Gold Rare slot as well. There's the Phantom Beasts, which are whatever. It, it reprints a bunch of old promos. All the Six Sams are reprinted. Neos Alias is reprinted. Giant Trunade is a big one. I don't have Giant Trunade yet, and this is the reason why I didn't craft a Giant Trunade or go after a Giant Trunade in one of the reprint sets, because this is going to be a much easier outlet to get it, and even if I do lose this duel, I have a 66% chance, roughly, to get a Giant Trunade out of one pack, because there are 32 commons and we get 22 commons per pack. Uh, there's also Six Samurai United, which I have a really good Six Samurai core, except that I miss United completely. If I can pick up two copies of Six Samurai United, which I'll have about a little over 50-50 chance to pick up if I win, this will make Six Samurai playable. The gold rares are really where it's at, though. Uh, we have a Captain Gold, which is okay. Rise is nuts. Necrogardner would be cool. Another Test Tiger for Gladiator Beast would be great. Dad? This is the first Dad reprint, and this is the reprint that made it somewhat affordable. Uh, by now, this card was limited to one, but... This would be an absolute nightmare in progression series, and if one of us gets a Dark Arm Dragon out of a gold series, it is going to be a pretty high profile target for a ban. This is also the first Mind Control reprint, this is also the first Gold Sark reprint. Solemn Judgment's pretty nice too, so I'm looking forward to cracking this. So one thing that I'd like to mention before we get into the booster packs is that with Raging Battle, the new a Shonen Jump Championship series began, and this will be the last uh, SJC as far as the promos go. That's when we move into the YCS promos, but this is the last year that the SJCs were ran, and the promo has changed from Doom Caliber Knight to Dark End Dragon. This will get accessible reprints, but for now, this is a very, very powerful synchro if you're playing Dark specifically. But this does not destroy. This sets, and it's pretty big by nature. It's a 20 26 normally, and even a 21 is pretty difficult to contend with after it's gained value by uh, sending one of your opponent's monsters to the graveyard. But let's go ahead and get into the big animal, which is 24 packs of Raging Battle. We really need to see Blizzard, Black Whirlwind, Shura, and Kalut. If we can get those, we will have probably the most powerful deck that we have ever had, even without Gale. Especially if we can see multiple Blizzard, we can make this deck work. It is a little bit less powerful without Gale, but we have plenty of time to craft those. And they also get reprints later on. So let's go ahead and begin with 24 four packs of Raging Battle, starting now. And our first pack has a Kalut and an ultimate rare Trident Dragion. If we can build a Dragon deck, that is a game-winning bomb. But I am super excited to see, right off the bat, we got our first copy of Kalut the Moon Shadow. None of the rest of this is great, but just any of those Blackwing cards that we can pick up. Because we had trouble picking them up during Crimson Crisis. We didn't get a single Gale. We only got one Bora. Had to craft a second one. But if we can make Blackwings work, oh boy. Boy, there is going to be some chaos. And there's a Morphtronic Bind and a Vidion too. 
We are looking for the Morphtronic pieces as well. If we can get a full Morphtronic core, I'm going to look to ban Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon uh, and then be able to play this Morphtronic deck. Unfortunately, we won't really be able to play that without taking significant uh, steps against a special summoning of Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon, which can completely destroy our board. And there's a Shura. We also got a Trap Stun. That's pretty good. So Shura, Trap Stun. The Ojama I don't really care about. A lot of the Ojama cards are at rare, and we really need to see different rares besides that. So I don't think we're going to be able to play an Ojama deck as funny as it would be if we could get Ojama Country. Because uh, Ojama Country is quite powerful, but I would really just like to see the Shuras, the Kalutes, and the Blizzards, and the Black Whirlwinds to make that deck a thing. And there's a bl Oh my god, what a pack! That's a Blizzard and an Earthbound Immortal, Asilla Pisku. Asilla Pisku is going to be an absolute menace in Turbo Duels. And if both of us pull one, it can often wind up to just who gets this first. It is so powerful, especially if you have backup to protect it, but that is a Blizzard the Far North. That is one of the big rares that we are searching for. If we can get multiples of these, I think we have to play that. Wow, what a pack! Vidion 2 isn't bad. Ojama Country, nice. There's another Morphtronic Bind and our first Black Whirlwind, that's big. We are six packs in and we already have one of each of the Blackwing cards that we are looking for as far as low rarity stuff. That's big, just having one of each of these so early in the box. Maybe some other powerful cards will show up as well. It is our second Morphtronic Bind, we're looking for a two to three of those to be able to play Morphtronic, but unfortunately we won't be able to play that until the second half of 5Bs uh, once we can remove Chimer Tech Fortress Dragon from the format. And we got another ultimate rare, this one an Exploder Dragon Wing, so we're getting all the Dragon Synchros. We'll have to see if we have a core for these, but I don't think we have one now. We did get a second Kalut, though, that's big. Alright, there's a second Black Whirlwind. Uh, our Morphtronic Binds are unlocked. Two Black Whirlwind, I would like to see a third, but two Black Whirlwind is absolutely fine to play Black Wings with. There's our first double tool C and D. Not going to be too helpful if we can't pull Power Tool Dragon because that searches it. And we have a few other good equips that can be searched up as well off of it. Uh, but it is something to keep in mind if we do crack a Power Tool Dragon. And there's another Trident Drakeon. That's not the Ultra Rare that I'm looking for. The Ultra Rares generally aren't that good in this set. An Elfin would be amusing, but I don't think we would necessarily play it. It's okay. It's not important for the deck, but it is okay. It is nice to be able to get some of the bigger black wings with. Another Trap Stun's cool too. That is our second one. And we got the Ghost Rare Power Tool Dragon. What is it with the Ghost Rare luck in this? Ever since this has started, we have pulled almost every Ghost Rare. The only one we didn't get in 5Ds has been Stardust Dragon, but that turns our Morphtronic deck online. We got another Double Tool C and D. We've been running a little bit dry on the Black Wings, but we still have 11 packs. Hopefully we can pick up some of them. We got a Blizzard, which is really important, and I can see us just being able to craft a Gale. Like one Gale and one Blizzard. We can also just play Emergency Teleport and just other tuners that we've been playing the entire time, because the only ones that require Blackwing tuners are the Blackwing Synchros. While they are nice to have, they're not super important to be able to play Blackwing. What powers that is just Black Whirlwind and the main deck monsters. I don't need a third Ojama Country! And we got the other one too! We got Coca Pakapoo and the Silipisku! We're gonna be unstoppable in Turbo Duels. I think we just have to build a, a deck around just Earthbound Immortal Turbo for just the rest of, of 5Ds because that's gonna be absolutely incredible if we can pull that off. I cannot believe we got both of them. And we got another ultimate rare. We got Grave of the Super Ancient Organism. This is an interesting one, specifically against uh, the Synchro Monsters. Uh, this makes all level 6 or higher special summon monsters on the field unable to attack or use their effects. This is a pretty strong floodgate that's probably going to go into our side deck. Okay, there. There's a card that I was very worried about not getting. We got a copy of One for One. One for One gets pretty quickly limited and stays there for a long time, but we got one. That's what's super important. We are 18 packs in, and since we got that second Kalut, 
I have not seen a single Blackwing card, so we are rapidly running out of time to get these cards to be able to make the deck work. We still need two Shura, one more Kalut, preferably one more Blizzard, but it's not necessary. And without Gale, I think we need to hit a third Black Whirlwind. There's Morphtronic Remoten, which is a fine one of in the Morphtronic deck, and that might be what we end up doing, even with Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon. It's just risky, because at any time we can just get our board wiped and have to deal with a huge monster. Considering that our way to stop attacks in that deck is going to be Morphtronic Bind, which gets turned off by Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon since we won't have any monsters, that is obviously a pretty big problem. Okay, thank you. You at least gave me another Blizzard. So that's two Blizzard. We can easily go into some Synchro plays. I'll just have to take a look through the Synchro pool. Hopefully we get something good. Now I'm starting to regret not crafting that Goyo, but double Allure of Darkness with Blackwing is going to be really strong. Got our third double tool C and D. So that fills out all of the uh, Morphtronic stuff that we're looking for. So we'll have to decide if playing Morphtronic is going to be worth the risk. I think after we ban and the Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon, it's going to be a lot easier of a decision to make. But until we get Fortress Dragon banned, but we do need to constantly play around that card. It might actually be worth playing Prohibition on Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon. All right, so only three packs left, but we're still missing a lot of really important cards. I would really like to see at least one more Shura and at least one more Kalute. One more Kalute would give us a playset, and Shura would give us two, which is serviceable. I would prefer three because that's our biggest Blackwing at low rarity. So let's go ahead and flip them up for a third to last pack. We got the third Kalute. That's super important. Three Kalute is what makes the deck so terrifying. We also got our first copy of Deep Sea Diva, which is pretty cool. That is going to see a lot of play later on uh, once we get to uh, just later formats where we have a bunch of good water tuners and be able to spam low-level water monsters uh, for Synchro and Xyz plays. So let's go ahead and move on to our second last pack. Can I get a Shura, please? That's not a Shura, but that's an ultra-rare Kawaki Meru Drago. This card is not good now, but it is going to be fantastic once we get to a Dragon Ruler format, and that could wind up breaking a lot of strategies that try to counter Dragon Ruler. I'm really happy to see that card. We've been getting so many hollows. I'm just flirt. How many Ultra Rares have we gotten? I think we've gotten like seven or eight Ultra Rares in this one, which is pretty crazy. So let's go ahead and crack our last pack. I would like a Shura, please. I don't think there was a Shura in there. No, there wasn't, but we got a third Blizzard. I think we're going to need to spend some crafts to make this work, but man, this is going to be a tough decision because we have the Sorakos. Sorakos are only real starter, though, which is a big problem. We have two Bora, which we can make that work. Only one Shura is really annoying because that's another good starter, but we have three Blizzard, so we can go into Synchro 6s pretty easily, as well as Synchro 5s. And we have some generic ones, so I gotta think about it, and we'll see what I come up with. Now, this list isn't quite as clean as I would like it to be, but we're just a couple of a common and rare crafts away from making one of the most powerful decks that we've seen in the progression series. This is Blackwing. This was one of the big scourges of the meta from 2009 to 2010. I'm missing a couple of key cards, but I'll go ahead and take you down the card by card. We have three copies of Blackwing Blizzard the Far North. This is a one card Synchro 5 or Synchro 6 in the archetype. We did not get any of the Blackwing Synchros. Uh, but we did get some pretty powerful generic synchros so far, so we'll be able to make use of this. Uh, two copies of Blackwing Bora the Spear. This is a 1700 piercer uh, that you can special summon if you have another Blackwing. Uh, there are a lot of monsters that can special summon themselves in the archetype if you have another Blackwing, uh, and that is the reason why the deck can get so swarmy. Uh, three copies of Kalu. If you've seen Honest, uh, this is Honest for Blackwings. This gives a battling Blackwing monster 1400 attack. Uh, it is one of the reasons why Blackwing was so frustrating back in 2009, uh, and this is something that is going to be quite the force in this deck. This can cause Shura to go up to 3200, Bora to go to 3100, Sirocco to go to 3400. This can just get over anything, and it's just going to be terrifying to play against. Uh, one copy of Shura, we only got one. 
This is what I'm probably going to use my common craft on. This is probably the best starter that we have within the archetype. It's an 1800 that when it destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can special summon a Blackwing with 1500 or less attack from your deck. But we don't have a lot of targets for this. Our only target for this right now is Kalut, because we did not get a Gale and Blizzard cannot be special summoned. So we don't get a ton of value off this, but once we can fill out the rest of the crafts in this deck, uh, we should be off to the races. And then three copies of Sirocco. This is our best starter. It's a 2k that we can normal summon uh, if only our opponent controls monsters. It does take our normal summon, unlike Cyber Dragon, but this is a fantastic starter. And that's it for the Black Wings. Then we just have some generic cards in the main. A uh, one Cyber Jar, triple DD Crow in the main. Uh, this is a Winged Beast for Icarus Attack and Crush Card Virus, which is why we're playing this in the main. Uh, we have a couple of tutors to get off Emergency Teleport, one Crabons, one Psychic Commander, and then one Sangen, one Trigodia. We just got this card. Uh, this can be very powerful with the number of cards we're able to retain in hand with this deck, uh, since we have access to Black Whirlwind, which is constantly filling our hand. And then one copy of Witch of the Black Forest, drowning out the monsters. For the spells, we have just nine. Double Allure of Darkness. This is the reason why I decided to play Blackwing, even though I don't have a lot of the uh, starters for the deck, is because we have so much digging power with two copies of Allure of Darkness. Uh, this is semi-limited, so this is as many copies as we'll be able to play, but man, is this card a house. You just get to draw two and then banish a dart. A double black whirlwind. We only got two of this, but honestly, two of this is enough. Uh, what this does is when a Blackwing is normal summoned, you get to add a Blackwing monster from deck to hand with less attack. So this can allow us to search Kalut, and Kalut is a lot worse when you know it's there, believe me. And one copy of Emergency Teleport, one Gold Sark, one Instant Fusion. We do have three targets for it uh, in our extra deck so that we can use this to go into big synchro plays with Blizzard since almost all of our tutors are twos. Then one Mystical Space Typhoon and one Pot of Greed rounding out the spells for the traps. One Call of the Haunted, one Crush Card Virus. I'm very excited to be able to play this. We have a lot of different targets for this. We have Sangen, Cyber Jar, and three DD Crows to be able to uh, use this with. Uh, this will cripple our opponent if it resolves, and I'm sure this is probably going to get banned as soon as possible. Uh, one Dark Bribe, one Dimensional Prison, one Dust Tornado, triple Icarus Attack. This is one of the big reasons why this deck was so terrifying, is when you try to remove their Black Wing, they can just tribute it and then blow up two cards your opponent controls. Very, very strong. You do have to have two targets to be able to activate this, so one way of dealing with the deck is putting out just a single threat to try to play around Icarus Attack, but it's so difficult to play around this card. And then one Mirror Force and one Solemn Judgment rounding out the main deck. For the extra, we have a Darkfire Dragon, Dragonus the Wicked Knight, and Musician King as our 4, 3, and 5 for Instant Fusion. Triple Black Rose, one Exploder Dragon Wing. We can't really make this except off of a side deck card, but I do want to show this off. A Triple Iron Chain Dragon, one Magical Android, a Double Red Dragon Archfiend, and Double Trident Dragon, which we also cannot make, but I would like to show this off uh, at the end of the episode. Then for the side deck, we have the Gores. I just don't have room for it in the main, but I uh, hope that uh, we may be able to bring this in if the games go a little bit long. A triple Stealth Bird. This is for if games go long. These are also additional targets for Crush Card Virus. And then we have one Mind Con, double Prohib, triple Black Horde of Heaven, one Grave of the Super Ancient Organism. Uh, this is a Floodgate for level 6 and higher monsters. So if Demon is on something that's pretty synchro spammy, we will bring this in. We can can make fives to go under this, and the Black Wings are usually big enough to get over anything else. A double macro for Dark Worlds, and double sack if we need more removal. I am super excited to just rain down Black Feathers on top of Demon Battler with this list. It's time to rev it up! Alright, so Raging Battle. I don't know about you, but this is like mega nervous time. Oh, definitely. Considering there's a gold series on the line and just a bunch of other stuff. Those gold series packs are always just super cracked. Oh, definitely. And also just this set. I'm well, not to mention the fact that even at the moment, I'm still considered on a losing streak because of the fact that my previous one was so bad. So. Yup, that's another reason. So I think... Based on the record, I want to say you're going to get two Gold Series packs regardless. I don't think so, because this would make loss number four, I think. Let's see. I lost, was it five or six in a row? It was five. 
So then this would five, be two, and then and then beating, and then the last one was put you to three. So you'll get two regardless. Okay. I believe. Oh no, no, you're right. You're right. No, you're right. I think I was. At, I think I won two, so it knocked me to three, and then I lost, so it counted it as three. So I'm at four. So it would only be one. Right. Which isn't too bad though. <sighs> That's big. Damn. That's big. All right, I am going to go first. All right. Good luck. Good luck, duelist. What is this hand? Oh my god, what is this hand? You're just asking me. Draw for turn. There it goes. Okay, stand by. Okay, I was about to say, I was a bit nervous there. This is such a terrible hand. Uh, I'm gonna just set one and pass. Yikes, okay. Uh, I'll draw. Stand by, main. Huh. Alright, I think I'm going to set one myself and run out Thunder King Ryo. Oh, yeah, this card. This card is pretty good. Battle, let's hit in for 19. Uh, 19 in. And I'll end my turn. Alright, draw for turn. Stand by, main. Well, now you're going to see what's up. Alright, hope you're ready. I am going to normal summon Blackwing Sirocco the Dawn. I knew it. I friggin' knew you were gonna do that. <laughs> Summon's good, but upon resolution, I'm gonna book it. Gonna book my Sirocco, huh? You got it. That way you can't just vomit uh, Black Wings all over the board. No, I can't. Go ahead. Alright. At least Draw. we're not... Well, you could be just playing Ryo, because it's a good card, but... The, we could both be on this, who knows. Uh, this, this archetype is so low rarity. It is, and that's what makes it so crazy. Okay, battle, let's hit the Sirocco. Yep, Sirocco down. Main two, I will set a card and pass. Draw for turn, stand by main. He thankfully does not stop raw card draw, so <sighs> I'm going to fire this pot of greed. That's good. So, I think we go for... I think I'm actually just going to set a barrier. Okay. And pass the turn. Draw. Stand by, main. I'm a little bit nervous about your face-down card, but I feel like I need to try for this. Let's have some fun. I'm going to run out one of my personal favorite cards from Phantom Darkness. Blue Thunder T45, reporting for duty. Uh, what are we playing? Spaceships now? <laughs> Blue Thunder's going into your defense? Uh, it is Cyber Jar. Oh, damn. Okay, that sucks. That <laughs> Sorry, gets, don't get the token. That gets the Ryle off the table, at least. Commander... Oh my god, you're making Flying Fortress Skyfire? What is this? Also, you have an E-Telly? Did you craft that? No, I think it was like the last card I had pulled, like the last, something like a, one of the last packs of Duelist Genesis, I think. Well, that's a thing. Uh, so we'll go, well, the Sirocco goes to hand. The Sirocco, yeah. the Sirocco and the Blizzard are going to go to hand, because Blizzard can't be special summoned. Then the Mirror Force will pick up. And then I'm going to set both the Witch and the Crow. So I'll put those in my hand and then put them down in random positions. Let's see, how do I want to do this? All right, Commander, you know what? What the hell? No, summon, we'll have them all go. Summoning them all? Sure. Yeah. Dylan Battle, I'm going to hit right. MST and pop your face down, your new one. I'm going to chain it. You're not going to like it too much. What is this? It is my Crush Card Virus! What the hell? Oh, shit. God damn it. Oh, you just... Oh, you royally screwed me on this. Okay, so you get my Cyber Dragon, my Chaos Sorcerer, my Summon Reactor SK. Wow, what a hand. And my BLS. That's pretty good. Uh, what's the other card in your hand? Oh, yeah, the Telly. Yep. God. Yep. <laughs> yeah, well, we all know this card is not lasting very long. No, it's not. God damn, dude. Like, Jesus Christ, you just blew out my entire... I'm down to five cards, and you've got what? Four, five, six, seven, eight, ten? I mean, that was what? A plus two? Jesus. You were um, set up. Your hand was terrifying. My god. Yeah. The sad part, too, is I was sitting here thinking to myself, 
man, if only I hadn't summoned Blue Thunder, then I could have sacked the commander for SK and then just gone straight into Skyfire. Yup. I was debating uh, on whether I wanted to just use the use the CCV with Cyberjar, but I'm thinking, I have enough targets for this, I can just roll the dice, and it ended up working. Yeah. Alright, I don't like this, but Psychic Commander's gonna go into your Witch. Uh, yeah, it will go into my Witch. I'm going to grab a copy of... Kalut. Uh... Oh, of course you would. All right, and we'll hit in for two. Sure, two in. What do I even do at this point, honestly? Oh, I forgot to add that into my extra deck. God damn it. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Lose Main two. Losing match because I forgot to put a card in my extra deck. Been there. Well, seeing as how I'm not getting Skyfire off right now, um, I guess I'll pull out my... I'll pull out my Gaianite Force of Earth. That is that is a good six. Then I'm going to... That is a six you can play under Crush Card. I will set a card, and I will pass the turn. All right, draw for turn. Standby phase, main phase. I have the Sirocco. Yep. I also have this Bora. This, okay. Uh, I will proceed to the battle phase. All right. Uh, I am going to. Oh, I should have used Sirocco's effect. Whatever. Whatever. Well, it wouldn't have it actually wouldn't have mattered because don't forget, Sirocco doesn't count itself or the monster itself. So, the worst you would have done was bump Bora to two K. Uh, either way, what I will do is I will just go. Well, you know I have a collude in my hand, so I'm going to try to hit over this. Right. Um. Anything on attack? No, nothing on attack. Uh, damage stuff. I will collude. All right, so It'll be eight. any other? Just that. Take eight. All and right. And then I will hit over the trap reactor. That'll be nine. Uh, then after combat, I'm going to set a card and pass the turn. All right. All right, first turn on CCD. Draw. What'd you pull? That actually may have saved my ass. Oh, overload fusion. Uh, well then. Stand by me. Problem is, is that going to be enough to save my ass, though, is the question. I think I'm just going to pass. I don't think that's going to be enough to save me right now. That's my problem. Draw for turn. Stand by main. I'm going to go ahead and run out the Shura. Okay. Proceed to battle. 17. I'm going to emergency teleport. Uh, I'm going to judgment the telly. Ooh. That's a big one. Okay. So I'm going to take 17. And then Shura. 18. And then I will attack with Sirocco. And you are going to take 2,000. Uh, that is indeed the case. I go to 50 life points. I was waiting so hard, especially after you just... Like, I was waiting so hard for you to be like, Okay, Sirocco and attack. Because, especially after seeing the Judgment right there, I was like, if he would have Sirocco'd and judgment in the uh, thing, I would have been in, he would have been screwed. I was trying to play around Sakuretsu and Magic Cylinder. Anyway, after combat, I'll set two and end my turn. Alright. Let's see. Draw. Unfortunately, it is my Warrior Lady, so that is kaput. It is. Question now is... God, the worst part about this is the fact that I don't know what your face downs are. Well, you know what? I believe you know. I, believe I know you have a mirror force. A mirror I know force, that much. There's a mirror force somewhere, but you don't necessarily know if it's set. Right. And I believe um, the other two are completely unknown. I think so. As insane as it may be, my on my only option I think is to overload fusion. Uh, yeah, you can overload. That's fine. So I will banish Cyber Dragon. Blue Thunder, Summon Reactor, Trap Reactor, and Spell Reactor. Oh, this is just a big Chimera attack, I imagine. It is a big Chimera attack defending me. <laughs> so that's a 4k Chimera attack. Four it is. 4k defense position Chimera attack. Which means the only way you can really out it outside of card removal is to summon another monster and have to uh, big boy Bora out of it. Uh, I will draw for turn. Standby phase, main phase. You know the sad thing is? I think I can actually do that. 
I mean, I'm not surprised. I'm gonna like that's 35. Closer. Yeah, that's more than enough to. That alone's special, already more than special enough. Special Kalut, uh, activate Sirocco, target Bora. So Bora is a 7,200. Two, wait, 31, 51, 65. If I have this right, because it adds all the other black wings except the one that's targeted. 38. So it's... 52. Yeah, 6,500. So it's not enough to kill me. But it takes me down to 300 life points and wipes out my monster. I will go to the battle phase. I, yeah, activating Sirocco, targeting Bora. Battle phase, attack into the Chimera Tech Overdragon. And damage step. And damage step for game! Fuck Kalut, man. <laughs> I'm just very relieved that we weren't wound up in a Blackwing mirror because Blackwing mirrors, I don't know if you've played them before, but they are awful. That's actually specifically why I didn't play them because I was 99% sure you were going to do this. God. And the sad part is, I can't even be mad because how many times did I fucking collute you in the offline series? Well, the shoe's so on the other foot now, isn't it? Yep. Draw. Stand by main. Ugh. This is not a good start. I'm going to... I'm going to Rota. You got it. Not like I can ash you. Not yet, anyway. So we will add Warrior Lady to hand. I swear, if I pull a last pack ash again... I'm going to be so mad. I'm going to set a couple of cards, set a monster, and pass. Draw for turn. Standby phase, main phase. I don't like this, but I think... The card advantage is too much to pass up. I'm going to activate Instant Fusion. Ooh. Instant Fusion. Okay. That resolves. The hell are you going to pull out now? Music. Wait, what the hell? Musician King? I'm going to activate right. Metallic. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get Krabons. Okay. Um, thinking. Okay, on res. On res. I know exactly what you're about to fucking do. I don't like this, but I'm going to ring your Musician King. That's pretty good. I cannot afford to have my board blown up by a big red dragon. Uh, and then you might also recall that I have not normal summoned yet. Correct. So I'm actually going to, believe it or not, I'm going to tribute summon Sirocco. <laughs> oh, good grief. Go I mean, that's not a bad idea. Because this... This Krebons is going to get banished if I don't. Anyway, 2k into your set. Yeah, I'm going to reveal a new card. Right. Scrap Iron Scarecrow. Yeah, that's a very annoying card. And it gets placed back face down for next turn. It does. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I was a little bit scared to let you have that deck. is because I know how annoying Scrap Iron Scarecrow is in a format with such little backer removal. I'm going to pass the turn. Alright, draw. Stand by main. Yeah, I'm gonna be entirely honest. I think part of the reason why I like you say so much as the like the most as a uh, the protagonist for a Yu-Gi-Oh series is just because he has so many friggin' awesome cards. And like, it's not even just a case of it's big power. It's a case of everything is just so interesting and unique. So, because like this, I think it's the first card I'm aware of that ever set itself afterwards. I believe you are correct. Okay. What? do we want to do is the question i'm gonna take a spitball i'm gonna hit mst let's hit your first card uh it was dark bribe Ooh, okay that's a good one question is what can i do here you know what let's take a chance so i'm gonna flip summon my dd warrior lady you got it and i'm gonna run out another new newer card i throw down the copycat card uh, that's pretty good. And I will copy your Sirocco. Yep, that's a 2k, dude. Battle phase. Let's go ahead and crash. Uh, I'm gonna deprison here. Ooh. I don't like it, but I think I have to deprison the copycat. Fair. You want to get the Sirocco but, off the table? I'm debating it. Because if you summon, if you pull another level 2 monster, you could Black Rose right away. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. I'm not a fan. I don't like that I have to pay 500 for this. But if it helps, but you're down to one card. All right, main phase two. I will set a card and I will throw the turn to you. Draw for turn. Stand by main. I do have a Shura. Okay. Uh, let's go to battle. Go eighteen. And right. we're just gonna stop that. Go. go. 
I'm gonna mark. I'm just for fun. I'm gonna mark the number of times that you do this, forgetting about that card. <laughs> Standby main. All right, here we go. I'm gonna special summon Sidra. You got it. Battle. Wait a minute. Yeah. Fuck. I don't know if you want. Now to I'm gonna be fair <laughs> now. I'm gonna be paranoid <laughs> because now I have to sit here and think. Okay, does he have Kalut in hand? Does he have the Kalut in hand? Indeed. This is a huge tempo swing. If I have it, it is. Um, yeah, let's be smart about this. I'll just set a card and pass. Draw for turn, standby phase, main phase. Uh, I'm gonna pass. Kind of a... Okay, draw. Standby, main. Okay, you know what? That actually resolves my problem a little bit. Let's set the Kalut. Uh, I don't have a Kalut. I mean, I set the Shura. Yeah, I, set the obviously Shura. you have Kalut on the mind. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> alright. And Sidra hits yeah, that. Yeah, that'll clear out the Shura. Thank God Kalu doesn't work on defense points, too. No, it does not. <laughs> Pass the turn. Draw for turn, standby phase, main phase. I'm going to run out this Bora, and I'm going to pass the turn. Uh, uh, I will set a monster, and I will pass. Draw for turn, standby phase, main phase. Uh, let's go ahead and go to battle, and I'm going okay. to hit into your set with, with uh, Bora. I don't... Let's see. Okay. I don't like to do this, cause I. But I'm gonna take the damage, and Sangin. you're gonna hit my Sangin. Yep. So what do I want to go for? That piercing on Bora is so good. It is. Um, I think I'm gonna add my Psychic Commander to hand. Sure. Uh, I will pass the turn. All right. Draw. Stand by main. Let me think. I have a couple options. Fortunately, none of my options are safe enough, is my problem. But, I'm going to summon out my Psychic Commander. Sure. And I will sync them off for Stardust. Stardust, yep. And I'm going to pass, because my problem is, none of my Synchros are strong enough to out a 3100 Bora at the current moment, which is the issue. Case study on why Kalut was so good. And yet, it, I think it only got semied. Uh, no, Kalut, I don't think it ever Kalut went... Kalut definitely went to one. Uh, you're also oh, going to okay. get to see another reason why I was playing this. Why I've decided to play Blackwing. I'm going to activate a Lure of Darkness. Oh, I don't think I've seen this from you yet. That's a good one. I haven't had a deck to play it in is the problem. Draw yeah, that's a damn good one. Draw two, I will banish the Sirocco. Pick. Okay. Uh, I am going to run out uh, another Bora and pass the turn. Uh, draw standby main. That does absolutely nothing to help my case. Wow, what a standstill this has turned into. You have scrap. Damn. You have scrap iron scarecrow, so this is a serious problem. You have yeah. No protection for it too, which is really that's a, good. That's. That's the rough part. Stardust can literally shut down anything except for direct battle, which is the problem. Stand by main. Uh, I am going to run out Blizzard. Target sure. Oh, all right. Is that good? That's good. I'm gonna sink. You're gonna make an. Uh, you're gonna make a ten. No, no. I'm just gonna make Iron Chain. Iron Chain. Okay. Uh, Alright, summon's good. Then I am going to go to battle, and I'm going to attempt to crash with... I'm going to attempt to crash. I'm going to Saku that. That is fine. And then I will pass the turn. Okay. Draw. Standby. Main. Ugh, that does not really help a lot. This is the worst part. It's the fact that, like, you know what's going to happen. Like, we both know the other has like, a big problem, and neither of us is afraid to- neither of us wants to step on that landmine first. We can't deal with it! That's the- I would like to be able to at least get the Stardust off the table, but I need to chew through these back row first. Plus, you have protection for the Scarecrow, that's what's causing issues. Uh, anyway, stand by main. Uh, I'm gonna just set a back row and pass. Okay. Draw. Stand by main. I guess I might as well. I'm gonna run out Blue Thunder T45. Sure. I'm gonna book your Bora. Alright, Bora gets set. Battle. Let's clear in. Uh, sure. You'll get your token. And I 
going to let that stay in... Yeah, I'm going to let that stay in defense, because it doesn't make much of a difference. And then... I'll end my turn. Draw for turn. Stand by main. Uh, I do have another Blizzard. Yep. Okay. Uh, Blizzard is going to get Shura. I'm gonna is this going to be another Iron Chain? It is. I'm going to sink. Uh, go to battle. Okay. Attempt to crash with Stardust. I will... I'm going to Magic Cylinder this. That's pretty good. And then I will pass the turn. Alright, draw. Standby, main. That kind of would have been better last turn, but oh well. Okay. Boy, I never thought this matchup would come to a screeching halt. Yeah, okay. Let's go ahead... I have to rip the band-aid off. Let's hit... Let's go into Bora. You gonna crash? Gonna crash. Sure, that's fine. Okay. Then, main phase two, I'm going to set a card, and I will pass. Draw for turn. Stand by phase, main phase. I gotta think again. What is the line here? God, this match has already been half an hour. I have to clear the Stardust one way or another. So I'm going to go ahead and show you another reason why I get to play this deck. I pulled three Blizzard out of Raging Battle. Oh, that's pretty sweet. Uh, this sure is putting in a lot of work. Um, actually, about that... Oh, you have a response to Blizzard? I do. I'm going to activate Royal Oppression. Oh, you have an Oppression? That's that's ugly. So yeah, let's uh, let's say that let's tell that thing bye bye. Yep, you have a royal oppression. If I had pulled that last turn, it would have stopped this iron chain dragon from showing up. Yep. But uh, I am unfortunately just going to. Do I wanna? You know what? You know what? I have to do this. I don't like it, but I'm gonna go to battle phase. Uh, I'm gonna attempt to crash. I feel like I know why you're... You've got a judgment set, don't you? You know what? I'll I'll allow it. Alright, that at least gets the Stardust off the board. I don't like it, but I think it's my best option here. I'm gonna pass. Alright, draw, standby, main. Well, I'm gonna switch my option token to attack. It's 15. And assuming that that face down is in fact... Oh, wait a minute. You have not judgmented yet this turn. You have not mirror forced yet this turn. The fact that you were willing to crash knowing I had scrap iron implies to me that this is going to be a solemn judgment. But if it's mirror force... Well, actually, now that I think about it, either option doesn't matter if I... Yeah, you know what? Let's let's not overthink this. I'm going to activate Heavy Storm. Uh, it's a Black Horde. Black Horde, okay. It's a Black Horde. Okay, so I'm good to go then, because I'm going to run out Blue Thunder, uh, and yeah. that should be enough. Yeah. Woo! Thank God. I was not expecting that matchup, of all things, to come to a screeching halt. Just the dynamic between Kalut and Scrap Iron Scarecrow plus Stardust Dragon? That yeah, just that... brought the game to a screeching halt. God, that's a terrifying moment. But, honestly, when I, as soon as I saw Blackwing, I wasn't even sure if I was going to be able to take a game, let alone have us into game three, so... Well, I have not been drawing too well. Strangely enough, most of the time, this deck does not mind going second. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Blackwing is one of those decks that, honestly, it is really, really hard to actually brick. I'm just going to set like, three. Alright. Draw, standby main... Ugh. Yeah, it, it's think... just really awkward when you're going first. It is. Not gonna lie, right, not I... gonna lie for this game, I actually debated going second. I think I'm gonna start with Sangin, okay. make it kind of simple. You have a Sangin. Go ahead, hit All for right, a thousand. I'm gonna deprison the Sangin. I'm gonna All book right. my Sangin then. That's pretty good. I mean, it gets the book out of your hand at least. I really did not want to have to do that, but at least that took care of that, because that's a pain in the ass card. I didn't want you getting a search off of Sangin, but if it gets a Book of Moon out of your hand, that's fine. Let's activate right. Swords of Revealing Light and pass the turn. That's pretty good. I'm going to draw for the turn, go to the standby phase, go to the main phase. I'm going to just run out the Sirocco and pass. Alright, so that's Swords turn Revealing one. Light's pretty good against me. Standby main. Ooh, that's a good one. Alright, so I'm going to flip summon my Sangin. Yep. I'll run out my Psychic Commander. 
Oh, that's pretty good. Let's think them off. For uh, Goyo, probably. Because I know you have a Goyo Guardian. Yeah, um, remember how I said last game that I forgot to add that thing to the deck? Oh no, do you not have Goyo Guardian in your extra deck? Oh no! So, yeah, for a little bit of reference for you and the audience, um, when I built this, this was basically me taking a previous deck from, I want to say it was the Duelist Genesis, removing most of the cards to keep the staples in place so I can remember what was what, and then building upon that. So I may have forgotten that Goya was another thing I had gotten. I mean, Gaia Knight's not bad. It's a 26. True. So yeah, we're going to hit Gaia Knight, and then Stangan gets its effect. Yep. Going to add... I think I'm going to add my DD Warrior Lady. That's pretty good. Then I'm going to set a card, and I'm going to pass. Interesting. Draw for turn, standby phase, main phase. Uh, wow. Wow, you're really putting me behind the eight ball here. Uh, I'm just going to pass. All right, so that's turn two on swords. Draw, standby main. Thank you. Right. Yeah, that's pretty good. Have First time I get to see it this match. I think it's been a hot minute since we've seen Pot of Greed from you. Okay, let's see. Let's go into battle, and let's hit over Sirocco. Get punished. I had a feeling you had that. Main phase two, I will set a monster, I will set a card, and I will pass. Draw for turn, standby phase, main phase. I get one more turn of safety. Though safety is honestly a relative term. I am going to allure here. Okay. Is that good? That's good. Uh, draw a couple. I will pitch this. Boy, this does not feel right, but I think I have to pitch Blizzard here. Okay. I'm going to activate Black Whirlwind. First time we've seen that piece of shit in this, yeah, in this set. I haven't drawn it until now. It took me three games to do it. Uh, normal Bora trigger Black Whirlwind. Okay. I'm going to pick up a copy of Kalut. Shocker. Then I'm going to set one and pass the turn because I can't attack. All right. And swords expire. They do. Draw. Stand by main. Ugh. Well, it's not a lot, but I can at least summon out Ryo, which will shut out your Black Whirlwind. That uh, will. And then I'll pass. Draw for turn, standby phase, main phase. I think this is how we're going to do this. I am going to activate Icarus attack. Oh, okay. Set Bora, kill both your back row. Yeah, that's pretty good, because you hit my magic cylinder. I figured there was a cylinder back there. Sort of scrap and my shadow there. imprisoning mirror. Yeah, I figured that was coming in as well. Yeah, shadow mirror. Shadow mirror stops almost everything in this deck. But what's funny? Except is it, it, for fucking Kalut. It doesn't stop Kalut. That was actually what I just checked the rulings on. Yeah, shadow but because Kalut resolves in hand, it doesn't actually work, which sucks. Uh, then I'm going to. Boy, I really don't. Do I have any targets for this? So I don't know if it actually matters. Uh, what do I go into here, if anything? I think I'm just going to go to battle, and I'm going to hit over this Ryo. Damage step. Are you kidding me? Do you have fucking honest... No, damage step's fine. Alright, I wanted to find out if you were going to drop your collude on it or not. I was going to say, if you have fucking honest... Oh, I wish I had honest. I would have I would have laughed my ass off, because... Kalut would have done absolutely nothing to yeah, help you there. Yeah, because yeah, because honest honest triggers after Kalut because honest happens specifically in damage calc. Well, not only that, even if it didn't, honest would have still bumped him up to thirty nine to your thirty four. So I'm, I'm well aware of how honest works. Uh, but in any case, I am going to run out this blizzard. I don't think I have any targets for Black Whirlwind, but I'm going to check. Go ahead. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't. Because if I remember correctly, I think Blizzard is. I think. Blizzard I think Blizzard and Gale are the weakest yeah, ones Blizzard right now. Blizzard is the smallest, yeah. But I will go ahead and bring out this Bora. Uh, then I'm gonna synchro. Oh boy. Yep. There's Iron Chain. And that was post combat main, obviously. Right. Ugh. Ugh. 
Well, damn. All right, I'm going to run out the copycat, and I'll go ahead and copy your iron yeah, chain. Yeah, yeah, probably just going to crash here, I imagine. Debating it. It went through a Saku. Question is, do you have another, or do you have Mirror Force? Let's go ahead and... Let's go ahead and crash. That's fine. After combat, I'll set a card and pass. Draw for turn, standby phase, main phase. I think I have to keep this chain going. I'm going to normal summon Kalut, trigger Black Whirlwind. Oh my god. Okay. Well, at least you can't pull a Kalut via Kalut. I'm going to get a Blizzard. Alright. The fact that you're willing to summon Kalut implies either you have another Kalut in hand, or you're just that desperate to keep the chain going. I'm going to go to... Yeah, go to battle, uh, Sirocco into your set. Yeah, let's right. stock with that. Uh, that's ugly. Yeah, that's fine. I do at least want to see what this is. That is my warrior lady. Uh, I will take 200. Would you like to banish? No. Uh, I will pass the turn. Alright, draw. Stand by main. Okay, that actually helps slightly. Not by much, but slightly. Um, God, if you have another fucking collude in hand. All right, let's take a risk. I'm gonna run it. I'm gonna activate Giant True Nade. Uh, sure. I'm gonna summon Blue Thunder T45. Yep. I will switch Warrior Lady into attack. You got it. Blue Thunder in. Damage step. Oh no. I do have another collude. Fuck. <laughs> take eleven. Ah oh, man. I'll end my turn, because if I ram DD yep. Warrior Lady into it, I'm taking 1,300 again. I'm, yeah, I'm taking another 13. Yep. Draw for turn. Oh, oh, oh man. my phase, main phase. I drew my pot of green. All right. I'll take a couple more. At least that's two Kaluts out of the picture, so that's not Kaluts. as bad. I'm going to go ahead and fire this Whirlwind, although I don't think it's going to do anything this turn. Uh, thinking. Uh, let's run out... How do I deal with Warrior Lady is the question. This seems bad. I can't out this Warrior Lady without committing too many cards, I don't think. Uh, I'm gonna just set a pair. Set a monster and pass. Alright, draw. Stand by main. I'm gonna switch Warrior Lady to defense. Sure. There we go. Run out T45. Uh, you have a T45. Hit into Kalut. Uh, unfortunately for you, the pot of greed also the pot of greed drew me into Sangan Crush Card Virus. Oh my god! And then after this resolves, I get to see. Oh, you have oppression. Okay. Uh, so I should have said that beforehand. Sangan effect. I will get. I mean, I may as well. I'll just get the other Kalut. <laughs> Gonna set a card, could be anything. Yep. Yeah, set something that's not going to help you right now. Draw for turn, standby phase, main phase. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just normal out this Krebons. I'm not going to Synchro Summon because you have Royal Oppression. Uh, I'm gonna just go in and, I'm just gonna go ahead and get in for 26. You sure you don't want to add the extra 14 to that? Nah. Go ahead. Alright, turn one. Draw! On that's a God storm. damn it. That's not gonna help you. It if you have one monster left on the if you have just one more monster, it does absolutely nothing like I have no hope in hell. Um hell with it. I'll end my turn, cause if you pull any monster, I lose. There's nothing I can do about it. Draw for turn, standby phase, main phase. Uh, I do have a blizzard. I will not activate and... the effect of the blizzard. Yep. And that will be the end of that. Honestly, it wasn't. Honestly, it wasn't even like Blackwing that won me that game. It was just uh, it was, Crush Card. It virus. was fucking Crush Card. Yeah, yeah, Crush Card Virus. That is not going to stay in the format for very long. Well, that's the sucky part. Is the fact that, like, it boils down to: Do I want to? Do I want to give up the pack of gold series to spin and hope I hit the band to hit this damn card? That's the problem. Yeah, it's it's pretty rough. So my box of raging battle was pretty silly. Um, I got a bunch of synchros. They aren't good synchros, but I got a bunch of synchros. I got that. Oh, you got exploder dragon wing. That's kind of nice. I got that too. Trident dragon. Oh, that one's ultimate. 
Oh, that's funny. I mean, if you if you have a dragon package, <laughs> you've got like, power. Like Drakeon's Drakeon's cool. The problem is all of your mats have to be dragon. Yeah. And it's also only a matter of time before Royal God damn. either. Wait, is that 10? That's 10, yeah. Wow, I didn't realize they had synchros that high already. Yeah, there's a there's a nine, there's a nine around as well. It's just not generic. It's Blackwing, what can I say? Uh I do I, even... I was very nervous about playing this deck because you might have uh, you might have noticed a lack of something. You don't have Gale, do you? I did not. You hit for Whirlwind summoned uh Shura and did while well, you had Bora and did not pull a Gale. I was like, "Oh, he probably doesn't have that." Honestly, good to know. Honestly, and then you and then you reveal three Blizzard and I'm like, "Oh, never mind. That doesn't matter." But I mean, I got three Blizzard too, so I can't complain. Wait, you got two? Yeah, this one was a craft. This is the Holy reason why I played shit. Blackwing. I got like this random. I think it might have been in Duelist Genesis or Crossroads. I got a random UR, and I was thinking I, I was about to just slam dunk craft Goyo, but I'm like, if I get a Blackwing core, this second Allure is going to be way better than Goyo. Yeah, because I mean, Allure gets limited pretty soon, but that's still a damn good card, and. <laughs> See, I remember you telling me that you hit an ultra rare and that you were going to pull something nuts that I wasn't going to think about and that it wasn't going to be Goyo. And I th honestly was like, what could he even go for? But it never occurred to me that you would have picked up a second uh, Allure. That's smart. It adds so much consistency to the deck, considering that I'm lacking in uh, some of the stuff that really makes this deck go. Right. Because... I got I got really good rare luck other than Gale, but the other reason I was nervous is I only had one Shura. Really? Wow. I didn't realize you only had one Shura the whole time. It's pretty accessible through Black Whirlwind and Sirocco, but uh, yeah, it, this deck is a lot more difficult to navigate than you think it is. I was going to say, that's going to be a little bit tougher because the thing is, Sirocco really gets, like, not necessarily power crept per se, but it ends up losing its significance like fairly quickly because of so much Blackwing support coming in that generally, usually sure is enough of a backbone to get you out of things to where you don't even need Sirocco. But the fact that you only have one Shura is kind of concerning in that regard. Like that means you might have to rely on Sirocco a bit more. Well, not just that, which not can just be that, interesting. but the other reason why I went this path is because I have so many options to just craft Shura, and in the 2010 Gold series, the entire Blackwing core gets reprinted. And I think the only Gold rares are, like, Gale and Armedwing, and Armedwing isn't even that important. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's good. good. It's good, but just any Synchro 6 will do. Right. Because that's the thing about the tuners, is, the, is that Blizzard and Gale are just good tuners. They don't lock you into black wings you got some pretty decent pulls unfortunately i mean granted they're not usable for right here but still i actually hit a couple decent cards and in fact a couple of them i think i might show later but i hit elf in the raven as an ultimate rare oh I, lucky, i'm never oh, gonna be lucky. able to use that oh lucky i would love to have elfin and then i hit two secret rares that i can't really make use of I hit a hardened arm dragon, which I don't really have a good enough dragon core dragon pull to work with for it. And then I pulled a king of the beasts, but I didn't pull any moha moja. Honestly, the secret rares, the secret rares so far in five Ds have not been great, just in general. Honestly, I'm kind of okay with that though, just because there's so many of like, them and they're so hard to pull. Right, they're so hard to pull. There's so many of them, but the fact that like all of the key cards have been like ultra rare and super rare. I mean, don't get me wrong, pulling ultras is not easy, but I'm thinking, I'm looking at it like, at least growing up, and while they were current, that was a lot easier to pull, and on top of that, Konami did really good in releasing a lot of the key cards like Stardust, like RDA, like Black Rose, as 10 promos and stuff like that, so it wasn't like you were completely screwed out of the synchro pulls unless you had money, so I mean... Like, honestly, I'm kind of okay with the Secret Rares in this point being kind of garbage, because it's a lot better of a situation than it was with Phantom Darkness, that's for sure. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, crack my packs. Yeah, go ahead, crack your packs, get your, uh, structure deck. Oh, we actually do have a set of promos that we have to discuss, but I don't know how useful they are to us. 
Uh, I am so excited to see those birds get there, but let's be real, it wasn't Black Wings that won me that game, it was Crush Guard Virus. Because I just saw Crush Guard Virus at the perfect time to wipe out the board, and there is no way that I'm going to be able to play that card past the next few duels, because it's got to be number one on Demon's Radar for a ban. Uh, but we did wind up in the winner's circle, and we're going to open up a pack of Gold Series 2009. I haven't decided if I'm gonna open up a second one, it really depends on what I get off of the first one. So this set's pretty big for me, it's gonna have Monarchs, it's gonna have Six Samurai United in it, hopefully. And then the Gold Rares are pretty fire. I'm kinda hoping to pull a Dad, because then I can just slot that right into Blackwing, especially if I have ways to modulate the graveyard. But I think I'm gonna take a pack of this and then I'll see what I open. If I don't get what I want, I'm gonna open a second pack. If not, I'm actually gonna go back to the wheel and grab hopefully a common or rare craft because I would really like to craft either a Gale or another Aura or another Shura just to make this Blackwing deck a little bit more consistent. Probably on what I'm wind up being Shura. There's a lot of commons I need to craft, but let's go ahead and flip them up, see what we wind up with. Oh, we got another Solemn Judgment! That's what we're talking about! That's pretty sick. So we have two Solemns now. Uh, this is going to get limited fairly soon, but then it gets unlimited later on. Uh, did we miss any of the Monarchs? We got a third Zaborg. Is that the only Monarch we got? I think that's the only Monarch we got. That's kind of sad. Because all four of the, the original Monarchs are in here at Common. Uh, so after much deliberation, I have decided that I am going to go with the second round of these. There are just too many strong cards, uh, both at Common and at Gold Rare. So I think I'm going to go ahead and take a look to see what we wind up with in our second pack. Kind of hoping for another United in the Common slot, because I would like to play Six Samurai. But one of the things that's been holding me back is the lack of United. So if I get a second one, that should be enough consistency for that deck. And I can maybe consider crafting a third one, but I think I have too many cards that are more important to craft. So let's flip them up. Oh boy, uh, that's a Monarch deck that we have. We just got a Ryza and a Caius? That's pretty sick. Pretty sick indeed. We got another Captain Gold though. I think these were worth it, especially considering what we got. There's our giant Trunade, and we got our second Six Samurai United. A bunch of Monarchs. I think we got all the Monarchs this time around. So, pretty pleased. I think this is about as good as we could see. We didn't get Dad, but uh, Ryza and Caius. Boy, once we get Stormforth and some of the Monarch stuff later on, there's a Monarch deck out there. So I'm pretty happy with these pulls. And that'll be a wrap for today's episode of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression Series. And join us next time when we ratchet the power down a little bit, but we've still got quite a few important cards to open. Until then, see you around.